And welcome to Harmony and Diversity, a program that endeavours to encourage harmony and diversity across the wide range of faiths and beliefs here in Victoria by showcasing individuals and groups involved in interfaith and multi-faith activities. For today's program, I interviewed Jesse Kerr Singh, one of the founders of the Centre of Melbourne Multi-Faith and Others Network about her long involvement in the multi-faith area. Jesse, you've been involved for quite a while in the interfaith area. Can you tell us a bit about how it all started and came about and your own history and background? Yeah, my name is, um, as you know, Jesse Ko Singh. I come from the Sikh faith. Uh, I was born in the Sikh faith. I was born in Malaysia, which is a multi-faith, multicultural society, right uh, with the church at the back of my house with a Sikh uh, Gurdwara not far, a Hindu temple within our, our reach in a mosque and um, a very harmonious uh, community and uh, in my life I, in, uh, I went to a Methodist school and I, I learned about Jesus and, and what Jesus taught and it was really um, it was interesting coming from a Sikh faith there was no clash between Jesus teaching and my faith and then uh, there was um, a, a deep understanding with all the different religions and and the enjoyment of food culture richness that I was when I graduated uh, from school I started working with the police department as a child I've always been very interested in all the different faiths and always found myself in dialogue with the imams and the um, rabbis uh, not so much rabbis because they were they weren't any in, in Malaysia uh, that is my later life that's mainly in Australia but uh, the swamis and the monks and um, always right from a childhood that's been my interest then I had an opportunity to go to England uh, to do nursing and I ended up as a nurse and I found myself always ending up talking about God to patients and people and and the harmonious living and, and the, the colors of the rainbow and the whole joy of being with society. And uh, we were in England for 10 years. I was actually nominated nurse of the year in England, achieved to become a director of one of the London private hospitals. And someone from Australia came into our lives who insisted that we should migrate to Australia. In fact, this is going back 30 years ago. And we said to the person, why should we come to Australia? And then the white policy was there. And we said, we don't want to go to Australia where there's such a prominent white policy. And, he, and this person said to us that we need to come here so that we can break that policy and we all live uh, in a multicultural, multi-faith society. And that was a good challenge. And both my husband, who was then an accountant, um, also a Malaysian, also a Sikh, um, educated in England, we lived there for 10 years, we moved to um, Australia. And we were invited to come to Adelaide, the city of churches. And when we came here, first thing, there was a few people from our community, the Sikh community there, and we found ourselves in a position where we were able to round all the Sikhs together and form a Sikh society, the first um, Sikh Association of South Australia and started working with Sikh community, bringing them together, having our services and found ourselves deeply involved with the Sikh community. Um, and, and because of my interest in all different religions, I used to get invited by various other communities to attend different functions and I found myself doing that. Daya, my husband, uh, Daya Singh, is uh, now uh, the head of the Daya Singh World Music Group, has this gift of music and he was able to bring uh, bringing interfaith and um, music together and also uh, very trained in the uh, traditional Sikh hymn singing. So we, we were leading the congregation in that area. And in, uh, in about, uh, it was 1986 I think, we got invited by Father Jeff Fole from the Catholic Church to join, uh, he was then trying to formulate uh, the 
the Multifaith Association of South Australia invited us as Sikhs to represent the Sikh faith to be uh, to come and form the Sikh society as um, the Multifaith Association and and that's the start of my journey really deeply involved with the interfaith movement. Uh, Father Jeff Fole and Rabbi Morrison were the key uh, founders of uh, that association and this is now going back what 25 about 25 years ago and we were able being from the background from Malaysia having lived with the Muslims the the Buddhists and the Hindus gave us a know-how to uh, PR and and work with communities uh, there and we were really appreciated I uh, worked um, with them I, I was one of the first um, I was invited to be a secretary for a, for a few years, and then I went on to being the vice president. I ended up as the vice, as the president of uh, the Multi Faith Association, um, and we were able to bring Multi Faith uh, community together in many many events. Every month, in fact, every second month, we were holding a public forum on different topics like marriage and faith, uh, family and faith. Uh, role of society in faith, in leadership, and and we invited the government to always be part of. And and um, when the centenary uh, celebrations came, we were first time funded some monies to do a big event, and that was so beautiful. And the in fact, I got an acknowledgement from the government, and from that, I was um, given the Centenary Medal of Australia for the advancement of multi faith in Australia and uh, around the world. And that even got me more entrenched in uh, the multi-faith work. And I found myself, while I'm, I'm becoming, uh, learning about all the different faiths, uh, the base knowledge was already there now going into theology, being in, I find that I was, um, the, the passion of global peace had come in my mind, the passion of wanting uh, equity, sustainability in this world uh, is something I started working and got involved with uh, the human rights side of um, uh, advocacy. I got involved with the minorities issues and I started getting inv invited to many of the different uh, conferences around the, the world and many at times um, I found myself as the only Australian representing the faith communities of Australia besides representing the Sikh community so that's why uh, that's how my passion starts About five years ago, about five, six years ago, we got, uh, we moved to uh, Melbourne and um, I was looking to carry on my multi-faith and human rights um, advocacy here and was the founding member with a young person, um, Elizabeth Young, who came, who was also wanting to form a multi-faith group and that's how Common started. Common stands for the Centre of Melbourne, Multi-Faith and Others Network. And we were able to bring uh, together some university students, some young and the seniors and, um, and started the dialogue on, on how we can attain peace, how we can educate each other. And since then, every year we've been having functions. Um, I, was in, I, I had been in Chicago a few times. I was uh, invited to, be the, to participate in the Parliament of World Religions in Cape Town. This is going back about 15 years ago and um, and then I also attended the Barcelona Parliament of World and I, I felt very passionately that it was time that we in Australia um, have the, the that conference come here and so I'm one of the key persons in bidding for the Parliament of World Religions and we made it happen. I, I wrote Tell us a bit more about the Parliament of World Religions and mm -hmm. what it, it actually entails yeah. and when it's held, etc. Yeah. Well, the Parliament of we had uh, the, the Parliament of World Religions is when people from all faiths, people uh, including academics, uh, anybody interested in in harmony, come together uh, on a on a on a forum. So we have at the Parliament. It's all. It's normally held over five, seven days over the whole week, and we have 
forums on different aspects of existence, um, including science and religion, uh, and 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 it's a, it's an opportunity for people to showcase their religion, as uh, their faith traditions, as well as actually communicate and dialogue with everybody else, and hopefully. Uh, heighten the need of us living as one society, one community, without having to lose our fundamental faiths that we all are born in. And, and, and that's one stage. So I'm very involved with the Parliament of World I had been involved with Parliament of World Religions, but I'm also had been invited to a few conferences with Religions of Peace. There's another big uh, interfaith organization from New York who also affiliated to UN. And they are doing it, uh, a communication between the leaders of different faiths, uh, the government and the academic. Then I'm also involved with United Religions Initiative, which is another third um, big international interfaith organization, which um, the head office is in San Francisco, which is related to uh, the grassroots, you know, actually getting grassroots to be involved with um, change and, and come up with healthy projects on, um, again, harmonious coexistence, uh, sustainability and equity. So I'm in, I've been involved with all the three different uh, major organizations. Then I've also been part of the World Congress of Ethnic Religions, which actually um, tries to bring about the ethnic community or the minority communities, the interfaith com uh, the inter or the indigenous communities of the world. and and do a lot of healing projects on how, uh, as, you, as we know, the, a lot of the indigenous uh, faiths around the world got suppressed with, with uh, the movement of human beings, you know, with the British colonization, the French going in, uh, the Spanish uh, bringing Christianity into places. And, and so it is about empowerment and bringing that faith back and, and, and doing a lot of projects which are healing. It's very interesting because um, as I hear the issues in other countries, you know, you, uh, I have had an encounter, encounter with an Aboriginal elder who I nursed uh, in, in his dying moments. And I had a spiritual experience with him as he was dying. I, I went through an experience where there was heat passed on from him into my body. And, and something, I, I happened to be being a nurse, you know, I, I specialize in palliative care, have nursed a lot of dying people, but this was really different. And I remember coming home to my husband, uh, and this is going back in about 15 years ago go when I came home and I said to my husband I don't know what it is but we really need to learn there's something very special about the Aboriginal people so uh, my husband wanted to do music he was an accountant hated it so he went to do a BA in Aboriginal studies and I went back to university to do um, a diploma in, in social sciences and I then did Aboriginal language, Pichinjara is one of my community development uh, subjects. And um, and even my daughter, you know, once she finished her, uh, her school cert, I, in, you know, I said that she should do a degree and she, she did a degree in administration of Aboriginal studies. And we found that we linked with the Aboriginal, as we, as we learned about the Aboriginal people, it was again, like as if there was an, a commonality between the Aboriginal people and my own tradition and my own uh, historical, I'm a Punjabi by, I'm born in Malaysia, living, in, I'm an Australian, but because my heritage comes from Punjab, which is now broken into uh, Pakistan and, and India and then parts of Afghanistan. So the whole language, the, the land traditions were not very different from the Aboriginal tradition. And my passion to have people being empowered to, uh, to be who they are. So we've started working with the Aboriginal community and developing respect from that. So common, which is uh, in South Australia, have been always working. Every time we've had a function, we've always invited the Aboriginal community. And I started doing a lot of work with Uncle Reg, who is now the president. So he, he, he be, became part of Common for the last five years, and then after I finished my term, I've passed it on to him. And, and it's so beautiful to see an Aboriginal person as a leader, and they have so much to offer. So this work that I was doing internationally has an impact on me locally 
to, to involve the Aboriginal people. I'm also the president of Women's Interfaith Network Foundation, which is um, which has come out, out, of, out of common and some of our dealings with people. I found that uh, women, you know, especially the Aboriginal women, they have women's business and they do not talk in front of the men. And the need had come, and, and Muslim women, a lot of Muslim women refused to come out to our functions because they were um, being women, you know, they, they didn't feel uh, comfortable to be there by themselves. So having an opportunity, looking at that with, uh, though my own fate, we don't differentiate between women and men. We've always done, we always uh, encourage community uh, to come together as a family and um, the husband, the wife, the children are normally part of everything we do. So we've, we formed these women and we're being able to um, encourage a lot of women who wouldn't otherwise be involved with interfaith uh, dialogue, especially the Aboriginal women. We have Auntie Waldo, who's our public officer. We have Sharon Firebrace, who's from a Yota Yota woman, who is now my vice president. And we've got other, Auntie Allison, who's been involved, uh, who's been a treasurer. And um, a lot of the other aunties have come forward to dialogue with us, which is creating a lot of harmony. Uh, and, and that's where we're going with that. And then there's a third organization, which I'm also uh, now the president of, is Green Faith Australia, which is actually looking at ecology in the eyes of uh, the faith communities, how we can play a role in, in, in sustainability here in Australia and then internationally too. Jesse, can you tell us a bit more about Common and uh, how it started and its uh, aims and uh, role within the interfaith dialogue area? In, in, in uh, Melbourne, in Victoria, yes. Well, Common, as I, I had expressed earlier, was founded when I first came here and my desire to, uh, and, and I recognition the importance that faith, need, if you want peace and harmony and coexist uh, for higher good, we need to bring a faith community together. Uh, not only dialoguing between themselves, but also the common person outside, you know, uh, which is someone without faith or faith, and and also become a bridge between uh, the young and the elders. That means a, ho a whole generational, you know, to tap on the uh, generational wisdom and we form common. We, we dialogued for about six months before we came with the title and Centre of Melbourne Multi-Faith and Others Network so that we are so inclusive and also it this, um, it come to the word common which, which is really um, about all of us and that's how common got founded and it's already about five six years old six seven years old now and we've been doing a lot of projects first within the university and then within the other grass communities we have had uh, uh, every year we celebrate the international peace day the un internet on the 21st of september yearly we pick up a topic and it it was sharing our environment the last time and the 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 one previous to that it was sharing our wisdom sharing our space sharing our water so it we, every year we come up with a topic of that nature and so th that's common uh, and then common bringing about the Aboriginal community to become part of the the faith community empowering the Aboriginal spirituality which seemed to have been missing in a lot of the in, uh, interfaith dialogue and with my experience working with the Aboriginal community not just here internationally too uh, and developing PR and trust with the Aboriginal community, we are beginning to find the Aboriginal community really appreciating our efforts towards the peace and um, the freedom of their religion, which is spirituality of the land, uh, come, is, is normally dialogue. We, in our programs, we normally start up with prayers from all the different faiths and we have Aboriginal spirituality uh, doing either uh, uh, the playing of the didgeridoo or a a prayer of the earth uh, to start our program. So, common is also about bridging the gap between um, the grassroots, uh, the other NGOs, the government, and the academics. 
um, and and common also is about forming relationships with um, not only nationally internationally too. We've had a large role in 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 moving the multi faith movement here in Victoria. There was already a, a couple of groups like the Dandenong interfaith uh, groups, but it was about uh, us coming and doing things that they had not uh, been able to uh, reach out to, especially the young people that we've managed to do. We had, I remember one of the first conferences we held was about equity and, and um, about our rights. And we had a, a whole equal, equal rights conference and we had the, um, the, the commission, our human rights commission, come and do a display on what uh, the rights that we have as as being from the faith communities at that time there was a topic on on religion and 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 its rights you know um, and and build on whatever the issues are what we tend to look is what is what is the issues that are going on in the world and to tackle it through dialogue through uh, putting events together where it could be just prayers coming together. The other thing, the last one we had, we actually had, instead of the elders coming to pray, we had the children coming to, uh, to pray, uh, all the uh, display of prayers by kids, and the kids as, uh, as young as seven, eight of age. And it was so beautiful to see parents and grandparents there, um, seeing that they are, their faith is not being um, uh, disintegrated into nothingness, but the next generation taking up. There was just smiles all over, uh, and a feeling of of uh, the the children being empowered to to see these leaders, little little young ones holding the mic to, and doing a prayer, and and the sincerity of those prayers were just so beautiful. That's uh, and we've had um, forums where we have the elders and then a youth forum and then the communication between each other. So that's, a, that's an area that we are doing, uh, we are tackling. And there's so much to do, we've just started. I, I, I look at it as we have started a, a group that is um, that are working in the advocacy to make sure that um, we are living in uh, a harmonious coexistence. We are very blessed to be in Australia. I feel very blessed to be in Australia because uh, looking around the world, this is one place where I have freedom of my religion. I have, uh, if I'm, because I'm passionate in this peace movement, I, I've got so much I can contribute. If I was in another part of the world, the chances are that I would be looking at just my survival uh, and I will not be able to do some of the things that I'm doing from this end. And um, I look at United Nations and I, I, I see what is so beautifully uh, in, in Australia, we're living like the United Nations, you know. And I think Melbourne is a real wonderful place to be. It's like a light of the world. Um, in fact, I think it's the New York of, of the planet where we are from so many different faiths that are living here. Uh, we have so many languages and we have, there's not a country in this world that hasn't got people born in those countries living here. Now it's Australians. Um, there's just so much of richness. And from here, because people, especially like the refugees that have come out, from here we are able to reach out to those countries through these refugees and addressing some of the issues that they are having. So there's so much we can do. Uh, first-hand information as they say and if we can heal people that are here then we will st that healing will reach out to to the rest of the world that's all for our program today for more information and if you want to see this episode again visit our website at harmonyuniversity.net goodbye for now Shanti Om.